Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to present uh, this Doctor of Computer Science podcast that is proudly presented by Doctor of Computer Science, Business University. I am Paul Mangal. That today become the host of the DCS podcast. Today we have an honor to have a very far away guest from Russia. Good evening, uh, Professor Natalia. Good evening, Professor Ford. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Of course, of course. Now. Our discussion today will be in the area of the future digital disruptions, technology, and the impact of the society. And before we go further, I would like to request to you to put the like, share, and subscribe for our YouTube channels, Doctor Computer Science, Business University. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we go start further, I would like to introduce first with our guests. Our guest is Professor Natalia Filminova. is a scientific secretary of the All Russian Research Institute of Labor under the Ministry of Labor Russian Federation. She successfully combined her activity with her position as Professor of Finance Department, Vladimir Branch of the University Russian Academy, and Public Administration under the President of the Russian Federation. She has dissertation council members of the Ivanov State Polytechnic University in Ivanov. She's also the federal expert of scientific technical affairs or scientific research institute of the federal research centers of the project evaluation and consulting in Moscow, Russia. Professor Natalia received the Doctor of Science from St. Petersburg State University in Economics. Her current research projects relate with the small and medium entrepreneurships, digital entrepreneurships, the impact of digitalization process on the labor market. Professor Natalia is also served with some of the uh, board of journals, as well as some of the newsletters that published by the Public Region Audit Chambers. Now, today I would like to discuss first with the Professor Natalia about the issue that related today about the disruptive technology as well as the ministry about related with society itself. Professor Natalia, before we go further, I would like to say what happens in Russia today in the COVID-19 pandemic. Is everything going better in Russia now? Uh, yes, I hope so, that everything will be better in the nearest future, and uh, we will work uh, together, and we can visit uh, your country, and you can visit our country uh, in our future collaboration. Okay, thank you. I heard that uh, Russia have quite steady numbers of new cases of COVID. Uh -huh. uh, Indonesia recently, we have quite uh, uh, increased in the term of number of the new cases. So is that going down in Russia in, in spite of the situation, especially like the vaccination that's already put it from the government to all of the Russian people? Uh, the situation is stabilized now, and uh, we don't have a gr uh, rapid growth of the new cases. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Thank you so much, Professor Natalia. Any, anyway, do you have any presentation that you want to share to us about our discussion this evening? Uh, yes, of course, I have some presentation materials, and I would like to share with you my PowerPoint presentation. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. The topic ahead. of my speech for today is the impact of disruptive technologies on the labor market. Uh, so, uh, in my speech, I would like to discuss some uh, topics such as how disruptive technologies influence on labor market, how labor market reacts on the on these. Um, challenges and what government and organization can do to solve such uh, some problems with uh, digital technologies and labor market. And I would like to start from this uh, topic such as COVID-19. This is a very big problem for all country and uh, COVID-19 influence on many industries, on many areas of our activity and our life. Uh, the COVID-19 crisis is creating a new normal for business leaders and workers, uh, forcing many people to work from home to help reduce and uh, reduce uh, the global pandemic. Remote work, home office work, hybrid work and telecommunication became uh, very popular words in our world now. 
Uh, today's, la uh, today's labor market uh, are undergoing a major transformation caused by the new pandemic COVID-19, which has accelerated uh, the penetration of new technologies uh, into all fields of our activity this slide so this slide uh, tells us about uh, about situation with the uh, impact of covid 19 on business uh, and now 54 uh, cfos uh, plan to make remote work consistent option for their workers almost a third of cfos are mm -hmm, are turning their attention to technology-based products and services as they re uh, reorganize their businesses. Uh, companies accelerated the digitalization of their activities as well as their internal operation by three to four years. So uh, according to this data, we can see that COVID-19 impacts uh, on business life and on remote working on labor uh, market. And uh, there are two different points of view how industrial technology will influence on the labor market. And uh, I would like to, to share you with uh, two options and two points of view of the scientific uh, researchers. Uh, the first point of this uh, influence, how, in, how uh, new technology influence on labor market, is uh, supported by Klaus Schwab. Uh, he is a founder and he is a head of World Economic Forum. And his book, uh, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, he uh, tell us about uh, technology, that technology will become more efficient and cheaper. And so human in most current jobs will not be able to compete with robots. Uh, and uh, the main reason of this situation, the speed, uh, which means the rate of change is faster now than ever before. The other reason is breadth and depth, uh, which means mainly radical changes are happening simultaneously. And finally, the complete transformation of the uh, entire system is going on now. So he uh, described this situation and he think that uh, disruptive technology will dis uh, disrupt the labor market uh, because uh, technology will become efficient and cheaper. But at present, type, uh, at present time, disruptive technology uh, are, still too, are not still too expensive and not uh, widespread. Uh, the other authors uh, supported this point of view, and uh, uh, they tell us uh, the name of this after Frey and o o Osborne. They are economists from Oxford, and uh, <clears throat> in their research, which uh, they were made in 2013, uh, they suggested that in future, uh, thanks to new technologies, robots will be able to successfully perform non-routine uh, types of work. In this case, a number of professions will disappear. They calculated that 47% uh, of all people employed in the US work in jobs with high risks of automatization in the next 10, 20 years. So this, uh, this both point of view uh, was supported by many uh, scientists. Uh, but uh, now we can compare this situation with the new technology, with the disruptive technology, with previous inventions such as industrial revolution. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at the history of technology and its impact on the labor market. Uh, there have uh, already been three industrial revolutions. Uh, and uh, in our history. And now we are facing a fourth one. The Industrial Revolution led to changes in the labor market with machines replacing human labor. The first Industrial Revolution uh, was uh, connected with mechanization power, steam power, and water power. And um, the second one was connected with mass production, assembly line, electricity, and the third one was connected with computer and automation.
And the first industrial revolution replaced manual work with the invention of steam engine. And the second industrial revolution enabled mass production using electric energy. And the third industrial revolution uh, stated uh, the automated area with information based on computer and the internet. In the future, uh, the super intelligence revolution uh, based on the Internet of Things, uh, Kaibe physical system, artificial intelligence uh, will greatly change human intellectual, intellectual labor. As the experience of three technological revolution shows, uh, the changes don't cause unemployment, but significant change in the structure of employ employment will be. Uh, there is an increase in labor productivity. Here you can see the dynamics of uh, uh, productivity per working hour by country. For this, uh, graphs i choose some countries uh, the, uh, four countries i choose from asian tigers that include uh, hong kong china singapore korea south korea uh, and also i took uh, tig tiger cup economies such as indonesia malaysia philippines thailand and vietnam and i add russia, russia for comparison as we can see from this slide, productivity is steadily increasing every year. It connected with uh, the development of uh, disruptive technology and high-tech technology. Uh, an increase uh, in productivity leads uh, to a decrease in working uh, hours, as you can see on this slide, and you can see the dynamics of this situation. The chart here show, oh, sorry. Uh, the chart here shows uh, us uh, the average working hours through history uh, from uh, 1817 for a number of early industrial industrial countries uh, were decreasing. The chart shows that over the past uh, 100 years, the average working times of workers uh, has declined dramatically. In uh, 1870, workers in most of these countries worked more than 3,000 hours per year, what is equivalent uh, 60 uh, from 60 to 70 hours per week, and uh, each year consists of se uh, 50 week. During the third industrial revolution, manpower shifted from the manufacturing se sector to service sector, and it influenced on the uh, duration of working days, as you can see here. Uh, thus, similar to industrial revolution of the 18th, where technological advancement completely transformed the world economy. The recent, recent uh, artificial intelligence revolution is ante anticipated to do the same. Uh, as you can see from this slide, uh, you can see big data, data market size revenue forecast worldwide from 2011 to 2027, according to Statista.com. Uh, the this market will grow uh, to 103 billion US dollars by 2027, more than double it expected market size in 2018. With a share of 45%, uh, the software segment would become the larger uh, big data market segment by 2027. Uh, so artificial intelligence uh, help increase efficiency and productivity by automating process and tasks that were previously performed by humans. Artificial intelligence also able to analyze volume data, big volume data of uh, that humans can can't explain.
At the same time, artificial intelligence uh, brings a number of challenges, such as uh, lack of trust, limited knowledge, human level, and some other aspects. Uh, the trust deficit is expressed as the unknown of how deep learning models predict outcomes, how a set of uh, raw data can lead to solution to different problems. Uh, is difficult for a non-specialist to understand. Limited knowledge is uh, present in many small and medium enterprises who may be uh, planning their work or exploring innovative ways to increase productivity, to improve their the quality of goods and services, resource management, learning and understanding. Uh, but they are unfamiliar with uh, such services like Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, and uh, some other technological, technological platform. Uh, the human level, level is also a challenge. If a model predicts uh, who is in the picture, a dog, a dog or a cat, a human can predict uh, the correct result almost every time achieving an amazing currency rate over 99%. Data privacy and security became a big problem in the modern world. The main factor on which all deep and machine learning models are based is the ability of data and resources to train it. With a lot of information coming in from different ways, different sites and different sources, there is bound to be data leakage. Uh, the next challenge is uh, uh, problem, the bias problem. Uh, the nature of artificial intelligence depends on the amount of data, data it learns from. <clears throat> in reality, the everyday data that organization collects uh, is insufficient and sometimes it is irrelevant. And finally, uh, data deficit is the next challenge. And uh, a large companies such as Google, Facebook, and Apple face problem with the unethical, unethical use of user-generated data. Various countries are using strict IT regulation uh, to limit their flow. Uh, thus, this company now faces the challenge of using local data to develop applications for the entire world, which will lead to a lack of data. Uh, sometimes these challenges are disruptive for companies and for individual projects. And I would like to give uh, some example where artificial intelligence, intelligence uh, gave wrong decision or made wrong conclusion. Uh, <clears throat> the first example is a IBM. Uh, IBM was developed uh, Watson for oncology and uh, it was um, this it was a very long project and for this project IBM joined to University of Texas Anderson Cancer Center for the development of advanced oncology, oncology expert advisor system. Uh, the main purpose of this project was to ca uh, cure cancer patients. Uh, researchers trained Watson on a relatively small set of data and ignored other important features related to concert patterns. Watson's approach, approach uh, focused on numbers, uh, collecting statistics and results, but it proved impossible to teach Watson to read documents as the real doctor. Moreover, the program recommend, recommended that doctors treat cancer patients with bleeding medications, which would eventually increase bleeding and make the patient's situation worse. In February 2017, the University of Texas auditors reported the Anderson spent $62 million without getting the achievements, and, and this project did not give any results. Uh, the, another failure uh, was from Amazon. Amazon uh, consults, uh, Amazon uh, tried to develop a special program uh, to analyze job seekers' resume in order to mechanize the search for top talent. 
Uh, the main purpose of this project was to develop an artificial intelligence that could quickly browse web pages and find the appropriate candidate for hiring. Uh, but this program gave lower rating to resume that contained uh, the world uh, women's, such as captain of women's cheese cl uh, club, and instead, uh, the technology gave preference to candidates who described themselves using verbs, usually using by men, such as ex uh, executed and captured. And Amazon reportedly abandoned the project at the beginning of 2017. And uh, there were a lot of publication and newspaper, and this publication criticized Amazon uh, for uh, this uh, program, that uh, Amazon was against women. Uh, the other example uh, that uh, artificial intelligence need people and need uh, uh, talented people that, that can um, make a conclusion, that can make a result uh, uh, from the program, is uh, artificial intelligence system in China. Uh, traffic police in many Chinese cities have begun using various methods to stop people crossing streets illegally. Many people now rely on automatic camera-based systems uh, that take pictures of people as they cross the road or mingle with traffic. And uh, here you can see the picture. It is a real picture from a uh, Chinese newspaper. And uh, this picture shows us uh, Dong Mingzhu. Uh, she is a top executive from Forbes list of the 100 most power, uh, powerful powerful woman. He is a, a head of company Gree Electric Appliance. Uh, this company uh, makes uh, air conditions. And uh, this woman was uh, mistakenly included among the offenders. The reason for this incident was her image on a bus in an advertisement poster for her company. But she was not personally present at the intersection. Uh, local police acknowledged the mistake and said uh, the snap of Miss Dawn has been deleted. And <clears throat> finally, the example from Russia, we have artificial intelligence system for traffic law enforcement. Here you can see the real uh, picture of a car. Uh, and uh, this picture was published in uh, one... It, this picture was uh, very popular in our newspapers uh, because in Russia, with the help of cameras, the speed and rule violation are established and the technique captures the crime. Uh, and one resident of Moscow received a fine for crossing a solid line, as you can see here, off-road uh, markings with the shadow of his car, and it was in 2016. Uh, the traffic police promised to cancel the fine, explaining it uh, by the mal uh, malfunction of the photo video fixation complex. So there are a lot of mistakes and we need to take into account that people can solve this problem and they can make uh, some right conclusion to avoid uh, such problem with the artificial intelligence and with the disruptive technology. So, as uh, our uh, statistics show, uh, disruptive technology is developing every time, uh, and people, knew, uh, people need to have new skills, new knowledges uh, to be uh, ahead, uh, ahead, to be ahead. Uh, uh, so, uh, some uh, sometimes uh, так, okay, 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 okay. Uh, uh, job displacement can also be matched by job polarization, which means an increase in the number of high paying and low paying job combined with the decrease in the number of uh, middle paying job. You can see here different type of country. This country distribute, distributed by the income. You can see here high income country, upper and middle, 
upper middle income country, low middle in income country, and uh, low income country. And uh, you can see uh, the different type of uh, skills, low skills, medium skills, and high skills. And you can see the dynamics of this skill by the different type of countries and uh, which uh, skills are uh, more appropriate in this situation and for special countries. For example, in developed countries, there are new fewer clerks doing routine middle paying job because uh, they, are, they can be automated. You can see here that the number of medium skills job uh, was uh, decreased uh, since 2000. Uh, until 2020. Uh, so far, this has affected low-skilled manual job less. Uh, but that seems likely the situation will change with uh, increased use of artificial intelligence and robots. Not awful polarization of job can be explained by technological change. In developed country, job polarization is associated with a reduction in manufacturing and middle, medium skills jobs, and an increase in services and high, high skills jobs. Middle income countries have increased the number of manufacturing jobs uh, and uh, middle skills jobs, as you can see here. So, uh, in, uh, disruptive technologies influence, influence on labor market and give their requirements to skills of workers and for different type of job. Uh, Office of National, uh, of National Statistics in England, or NC, you can see the link here, uh, has analyzed uh, the jobs of uh, 20 million people in England. It was in 2017 and has found that around 7% uh, are of them at high risk of automation. Automation uh, involves replacing tasks currently done by workers with technologies, which could include computer programs, algorithms, uh, or even robots. Less, automat uh, less automatable uh, processes they require a high degree of perception and manipulation. They are basic, for example, for surgery, uh, creativity, uh, which include work of scientists and artists, and social intelligence. Uh, it is necessary for um, trainers and psychotherapists. And uh, they make conclusion that the three professions with the least risk of automation uh, are practicing physicians, teachers, and institutions of higher education, and senior professional at educational institutes. All of these professions are considered highly skilled. You can see here. And uh, now you can see the slide from World Economic Forum. Uh, they make uh, job survive 2020 and uh, they compare a uh, different type of job. And uh, here you can see uh, some job with incre increasing demand and with decreasing demand. And uh, you can see the first place will, will, uh, will be demanded is a data R, data analyst and scientist, artificial and machine learning specialist, big data specialist, digital marketing and strategy specialist, process automation, automation specialist, and some other. They are placed on the left side of the slide. And uh, on the right side of the slide, you can see some profession with a decreasing demand, such as a data interclex, administrative and executive secretaries, accountant, uh, accountant and auditors, assembly and factory workers, and some other uh, profession. Uh, so the profession will be changed and many government and many organization try to predict this situation and uh, make some 
training uh, for their employee. And uh, if we will uh, speak about government, they make some condition for the people for some territory. And uh, there are some uh, programs that can help people. The first one is upskilling. Uh, upskilling is the practice of teaching employees how to use new tools and practices that will help them do their job better and faster. The other tool to improve uh, employees' uh, knowledge and skills and reskilling. Uh, Reskiling is, is, a, is a form of education focused on helping employees make uh, career transformations. And finally, this is assistance and aid from the government uh, in developing new skills. And uh, I would like to give some examples on different type of uh, employee assistance. The first uh, type of assistance is upskilling. Uh, this uh, type of activity were, uh, were, uh, this type of activity uh, is uh, were used by Guardian Life Insurance Company. Uh, this company is uh, may is. Uh, Activing on our on American uh, market uh, since 1860, and uh, the ages of this company more than 160 years. Uh, they developed their program, and uh, like all insurance companies, Guardian's business depends on its ability to articulate and act on patterns found in vast quantities of data. Uh, uh, and uh, new technologies like Fitbit monitors, car sensor, and other are generated important data about health risk, driving habits, and plethora of data that can help companies calculate the risk of insuring a person or a business more preciously. And uh, the company found that there is the gap between, uh, between real knowledge of uh, employee and uh, between purpose level of uh, knowledge of employee. And they develop a talent strategy uh, that includes short seminar and intensive training courses. The other example is uh, Disney Company. Uh, they launched code Rossi 2.0. Uh, it was an intensive boot camp uh, that trains female employees in software, in software engineering. In engineering. And uh, this, uh, the duration of this program was 15 months. And this program was open to women across division and included three month formal training and a two six month internal internship, after which uh, graduates. Uh, moved into tec technical roles at the company. But uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, this experience was, wasn't so uh, spread on the company. They can teach only 20 women from the company. And uh, now they are thinking about how to improve this uh, program and how to help women in, the, in their company. The other example from government, in Russia we have Russian state program, the digital certificate program. This is, uh, this program um, is a unique collaboration of the state universities, private and state universities and business to improve digital literacy and develop digital economy competencies among citizens. Uh, additional educational programs help people develop the skills demanded by the rapid development of the IT industry in the context of universal digitalization. And everyone who wants to have additional knowledge in IT uh, can uh, get this certificate via special site. In Russia, we have a special site for IT ser for government services and uh, use this certificate to improve their knowledge and uh, add, uh, improve their skills. 
And finally, we in Russia, we have Atlas of New Professions. And this Atlas was developed for, uh, for schools for parents of uh, pupils who are finished for who are graduated from schools and uh, this uh, at atlas uh, consists of two type of profession they have new professions like environment urbanist this is a designer of new cities based on ecological uh, bio biotechnology specializes in the field of construction, energy, and pollution control, for example. And another new profession uh, that, uh, that uh, was highlighted by, uh, Atla by, by Atlas of New Profession was City Farmer. This is a specialist who sets up and maintains agribusinesses, including food production on the rooftops and walls of skyscrapers in large cities. At the same time, at the same time, they highlighted retired profession. Uh, these, these are professions that will be replaced uh, by robots or artificial intelligence. Uh, this uh, profession includes such as the accounts manager because this uh, profession could be optimized uh, because computer program can completely replace humans. And other profession, for example, loan manager. Uh, today, it is possible to apply for loan online. And in the future, special computer program will make decision about granting loans by requesting information about the potential client in big data base. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, artificial intelligence, intelligence um, disruptive technologies uh, create some changes on labor market and progress will create more jobs than than can be destroyed by them and people uh, people need to uh, follow the news uh, they need to get new knowledges and new skill uh, to be on demand on labor market one of the things that caused in my mind when we look at it about the current situation is if we compare to the situation let's say indonesia probably we have kind of situation is I don't say the same, but quite uh, severe, especially in 1998, where we have kind of recession in the time. Uh, when we compare now, especially in the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, you mentioned about the situation is especially with the society. The impact is not only about the situation, especially for the health only, but also impact with the society in the term of economics, right? Especially mm -hmm. with the business and of course with the manufacturing now what i'm saying is what happens anyway uh, when you look at it now and compare if there is no COVID 19 pandemic so now is there is a COVID 19 pandemic right so mm -hmm. if you wants to make kind of prediction if there is no COVID 19 pandemics what's going on now especially especially with the industries and manufacturing what do you think about that if there is no uh. COVID 19 pandemic for instance What's going uh, on? Before the situation, it yeah. was, yes, the situation was uh, better than now, but people can change their activity and uh, uh, and now we use a lot of remote work. We mm. managed to uh, use uh, distant uh, learning, for example, mm. as a teachers, and we can use uh, some uh, online tools to collaborate with mm. each other. Mm. And uh, other industries should follow for uh for educational organization because educational organization organization was on the age of the pandemic i mean uh, they were the first who 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 was able to use uh, online work and uh, online uh, tools for their classes okay and industry and some other organization and some other um sector of economic will follow them and they will use it but it's not possible for all organizations for example restaurant business or tourist business yes uh, like aircraft <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, one of the things that's brought Princeton like in the few, in the past that none of us ever thought that uh, remote working becomes mm -hmm. the common working now. Because yes. Because in the past, people thought that if you want to have a uh, working, you have to go to the office, right? Yes. Only business, and after that, uh, for instance, in Saturday or Sunday, you have a holiday, sort of like that. But today, if you look at carefully, there are some of the situation, especially with the uh, based on the aid of the technology, people feel that they are quite comfortable to work at home or even to work somewhere and then doing their own project or their own work. Mm -hmm. Now, my very basic question is what's going on, especially with the manufacturing? In manufacturing, they cannot go working at home, right? Yes, they can't. It's the, especially that's the impact, especially for the labor, right? In the labor, mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. course, you cannot doing some of the manufacturing stuff at home or doing somewhere, right? You have to come mm -hmm. to the factory and doing some of uh, activity over there. So uh, what's going on anyway, especially in Russia, especially for the labor? Do they have to close it down, shut down it, or what, what's going on in Russia? Especially? We don't have a lockdown now. Our enterprises, is, uh, our enterprises are working now, uh, but uh, 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 the owner of enterprises divided people uh, mm -hmm. on ages. For example, people who are older than 65 years old, they can mm -hmm. work remotely. And uh, with other people, they decided to divide them and they have a different working hours. Okay. So because what I'm saying is like this, the, there are some of the level of work, right? That's still yes. able to, I can say, increase their performance, even mm -hmm. in the COVID-19 pandemic situation. For instance, like if you're working as an as a IT technologist, or, for instance, mm -hmm. or you're working, for instance, as an architect, for instance, where you don't have to come to the spot, you can mm -hmm. work in very far and then uh, send it your results through the, some of the media, for instance, using technology itself. Of course, that's okay, working like that. But for some of the work that you have to, for instance, like labor, for instance, where you have to go to the manufacturing and after that, you're doing some stuff over there. That's become a problem over there, right? And yes, yes. based on your presentation, you mentioned as well about the industry 4.0. And that's the, one of the impact is especially doing some uh, robots or some of the artificial intelligence stuff inside, right? Mm -hmm. So my question is, do you think that COVID-19 pandemics become one of the, I can say, speed up the process of the industry 4.0 in all of the level of the, a society itself. What do you think about that? I hope so, because now the disruptive technology is very expensive uh, okay. to use it everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I hope so that pandemic, this pandemic, uh, will make it more uh, possible for industries to use it and make uh, labor more cheaper. But now this technology is very expensive okay. and not widespread. Yeah. One of the things is, for instance, like if you look at it, especially in the university, right? I'm not sure mm -hmm. in Russia because in Indonesia situation, we have to learn from home, the student especially. Mm -hmm. means if I can remember that the situation is already more than one year, starting from mm -hmm. March 2020. And yes. now it's already you know, August. That's become more than one year. Now, there's... Almost all, almost all of the students feel there are some of in the first time probably they feel happy mm -hmm. this is the situation because they feel like study at home and they enjoy it right. Yes. I usually if there's about three to four months they feel happy, but after that there are some other situation that happens is they feel bored because mm -hmm. they just look at the lectures or even they see the friends only on the on the screen right. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the other impact. That's, of course, at the end, there is we call it kind of the, uh, what I call it, kind of uh, implication, especially for the performance of the students, especially for the academics, right? Something mm -hmm. like that. So according to your experience, because you are a professor as well in Russia, if you compare it between online and on-site situation, online or offline, which one is better in your terms? Uh, you asked me this question before, and yes. I told you that I prefer online job. Oh, you prefer online? Okay. I preferred the oh, last okay. time I told you. Okay, why? Why? But 
because I don't, I did, I didn't need to wear something. <laughs> oh, okay. um, yes, okay. I didn't need to take uh, time for uh, to, to reach some places. But okay. now I have other opinion. I prefer to work in office. Oh, you prefer to work now? In yes. Office. Now, but okay. last time I told you that I preferred uh, to online. work from home. Yes, online. Okay. That's that's your opinion. Okay. Why why you change your mind? Yes, because now I have my work day, day from 9.30 a.m., ah, for example, ah, ah. until 6. And I can do a lot of things because mm. at home I need to have self-management. And I don't have such strong skills in self-management. Okay, okay. I don't have something else here. Yeah, I know. Yes, I have on the computer my job and my tasks. Okay. At home, I have a lot of things. Okay. How about the student self? How about the student self? Uh, the students uh, agree with this uh, point of view. They prefer to go to classes because it's oh, more interesting the okay. than they can communicate. At the beginning, it was interesting to use computer, to of use course. online tools. Yes. But uh, late, it was boring. Yes, you, you, you are right. So, so you feel that at the end, the student will select that they want to have come to the school rather than they just look at it online. Yes, but it depends on the form of uh, education. For example, in mm -hmm. Russia, we have uh, full-time students and we have part-time students. Okay. And part-time students uh, need to combine their job and educational process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, these students uh, are living not in Vladimir, for example. They are living in Moscow. So mm -hmm. it is difficult to combine job in Moscow and uh, studying in Vladimir. And mm -hmm. these students prefer to study online. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, full-time students prefer to go to university, to communicate, uh, to speak, uh, to discuss, to be engaged in a real class. Mm. But sometimes it's good, but not for a, <laughs> for a long time. Okay, so one of the unique uh, situations currently that we feel as some of people that feel they are isolated, right? They cannot mm -hmm. go anywhere. Right, they have to stay in certain place. They cannot go to other countries. They cannot travel to other countries, and so on. So, what I'm saying is, do you think that this situation will make us decrease in the term of performance, even in the term of the economic value? What do you think about that? Because we cannot go somewhere, right? For instance, yes. Uh, for instance, like you, you want to go to United States, for instance, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, you cannot go. For instance, if I want to travel, let's say, to Japan because there is a COVID pandemic situation, especially in Indonesia, and there are some other countries say, oh, okay, you cannot, you have to stay in your country because that's kind of very severe pandemic. So, this, in the other side, this impact with especially with the performance, right? Because mm -hmm. if you go to the United States, you can share some knowledge and some others can have activity and so on. So, what do you and think? And spend about money. It? Yes, of course, that's the other impact. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because, uh, for example, your country is a touristic country. For example, Bali. Oh, yes. Yes, the budget of Bali consists of tourists, uh, tourists' expenditures. Correct, correct, correct. correct. And, uh, for example, in Russia. Uh, Russia is, uh, has uh, fourth place uh, in Europe on tourism. So we don't have money from tourists. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This so, is one reason. The other one that we need to have a uh, uh, possibility to change our knowledge, for example, as we are sci scientists. Okay, 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 okay. So in the other side, this is, even though you say, uh, you, you mentioned that uh, in the future, for instance, that the COVID-19 will be diminished or will be, will be, say, will be eliminated, for instance. Still, we, we, I don't know. What do you think? The habit is still the same, for instance, like now? Uh, no, I, mean, I think no. Because why? people want to be free. They want to oh, travel. Okay, okay. I okay. dream to travel. <laughs> okay, so what I, why I'm asking this one? Because there are some of people, they're still arguing, you know. They say like this. Okay, if there is no, if it's, it's COVID-19 eliminated, it means, okay, in the term of, I don't say eliminated, but we can control it. 
And some people say we will forget it about online, we will forget it about anything using the technology and etc. We will go back to the normal, normal food that was put again. But other people said, of course, we cannot just change 180 degrees and then you forget it in the past, past meeting in the COVID-19 pandemic situation. Of course, you will still follow it. For instance, like lecturing, the students still use what I call a kind of a hybrid learning, for instance. They, they, they have online combined with uh, uh, face to face on site, for instance. And some other businessmen say, of course, we can have a meeting. You don't have to go other places and so on. So what do we think, especially in Russia? Russia is, is quite big because in the term of the, the what we call distance. it, the distance is very, very huge. Now, my question mm -hmm. is, do you think that after this one, they will implement it the same like that? Uh, do you offer to forget that we get uh, during COVID-19 our uh -huh. skills, our knowledges? Uh -huh. Do you offer? Do you offer what? To forget everything that we get no, during no. COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course, we can't be the same, I think, we, because we have a great experience how oh, to wow. survive during the COVID-19, for example, how to survive if we are isolated. Okay, okay. But okay. Uh, I think we will combine this, our uh, new, it's not new, our COVID experience with the other situation. And I heard and I read that situation with COVID will be next three years. Oh, next three years. Okay. It means quite takes so long. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so one of the things that you mentioned about artificial intelligence, some of cases, right? You mentioned in your presentation mm -hmm. about, I can say like an anomaly or some kind of, we call it kind of uh, a box, for instance. Because in the in that your presentation, you mentioned almost all of them using the camera to capture kind of position of people and so on, right? Mm -hmm. So that's quite that's quite uh, almost similar in Indonesia, where the government wants to put the, some of the camera especially for the traffic and control mm -hmm. the traffic and make sure that all of the fines will be collected digitally, digitally mm -hmm. meaning electronically. And all of the evidence will be sent it at home by some of the electronic stuff, and then and then almost all of the people society we can look at it in a, what we call it in the clear way. Mm -hmm. So my question is, do you think the technology that they in, they introduce it that will be kind of the knife with the two sides? Meaning, in the first time they want to help people, but in the other side there are some of the jobs will be diminished. Yes, so I think, think so. Uh, yes, I think it will be a very big control because this data data can predict the behavior of people, their expenditures, uh, all their life, and mm -hmm. this data will be collected in one place. So you, so so the government can manage people. Okay, so there's, and there's... other and other reason, uh, it is dangerous to collect a, a lot of data because uh, because of security. <laughs> you know yeah. about uh, black uh, dark internet. Yes. Yes. yes so yeah. There are a lot of database there. Yeah, some of the leak, especially for the database. So, for instance, like a customers or even mm -hmm. some of the citizen itself, they can. Some of yes. the digital leakage in that on that side. So but bank information. Of course, bank information, yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. All so, our money, all our life there. <laughs> so my question is very simple, Natalia, because uh, Russia, Indonesia is quite uh, different in the term of managing data, right? Mm -hmm. Because Indonesia is quite uh, open rather than like in Russia. Indonesia, all of the companies and, and, and especially for the institution, they have their own data. But I'm not sure in Russia today. Almost all of the company institutions that they have their own data, or that belong to the country, to the Russian government. What do you think? Uh, in uh, in Russia, we have private company, only private company, mm -hmm. and some mm -hmm. company uh, uh, they the owner is under control of government. Okay. Okay. So, so we have different type of companies. Okay. So with government right. participation and without government participation. Okay, okay. 
So what I'm saying is, for instance, if they introduce the technology, right? Mm-hmm. Recently, for instance, like in Indonesia, we have we call a digital transformation. This is kind mm-hmm. of situation that quite common in many many places because due to the COVID, all of the <clears throat> all of the conventional ways they have to transform it into digital, right? That's we call a digital transformation. I do believe that's how all uh, happens as well in Russia. So when you discuss about digital transformation, digital digitalization, actually there are two sides in here. The first, they provide us to more, I can say, more open. Okay, mm-hmm. you can see, you can check, you can track, even you can validate everything digitally. That's quite easy for you. Now, the next, the other side is giving kind of situation open to other people can steal the data or kind of uh, using the hacking, for instance, they can mm-hmm. take the data and etc. So, based on your experience, for instance, especially in, in your place in, in, in Russia, what what's going on in Russia about digital transformation? In Russia, we have um, now we have new trend. Um, many biggest company create their own ecosystem. For example, Sberbank. Okay. Uh-huh. And they try to include many, many, many services. For example, I have. If we, if you want, I can sh- uh, show okay. you. Sberbank. That's one of Sberbank, the banks. Sberbank. Yes. Yeah, yes. I have a, I have this a- is. I ever go to that bank anyway. Yes, okay. yes, yes. You change <laughs> your money. And this bank uh, has a lot of uh, uh, applications such as uh, uh, TV, uh, films, and we have video. Wait, 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 wait. wait yes. You mean that's the bank? They bank. On yes. annual banks. Why bank. is the TV? Yes, they. you can order some food there. This is ecosystem. And if you want, I can share you with you some video about. Wait, wait, wait. how come a bank selling a food or television? Food, yeah, how come video? Yeah. Because uh, they try to be the first company in Russia, uh, and they try to occupy all services. I will uh, show you. Okay, it's quite very unique. Anyway, we yes. never heard that in here. We never heard about that in here. So you and a bank, a bank, that bank, also, bank. Yes, you saw this bank. Yeah, I know. I mean, and now they changed their brand. They are not Sber, Bank. And now they just Sber. Sber. Without bank. Without bank. Okay. Yes, but the main fu- function is uh, the money. But they have a lot of additional functions. Uh, yes, I will show you. I'll okay, try right, to find. Right. So uh, when, this when, is their application. Uh huh. Okay, I can see. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes, and they so have. You, so you can buy a food from that bank. Yes. Yes, I can buy everything <laughs> here. I try to find the application, and they have. Um... <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, sorry, Natalia. This is a quite tricky question. I want to ask you, mm-hmm. not your economist, right? If a bank. Change the function, not change actually, add another function mm-hmm. using for consumer, right? This we call consumer function, right? The clean, clean the room here. This, oh, okay. So the bank that offering the clean of the room. Yes, so they have a lot of function. <laughs> okay. So what I'm saying, I want to ask you this one. Uh-huh, okay. Imagine, imagine a bank. This uh-huh. bank is a place where people put the money, right? Mm-hmm. Put the money. Uh But on the other side, these banks also behave like, I can say, consumer retail or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So I I don't believe it. this bank can be so working in proper manner. Why? Because on the other side, this bank is uh, have a function to save, to keep and save the money, right? But on the other side, this bank have a function as a retail, selling another product and etc. I do believe this become a kind of crowded, right? Why, why say crowded? Because imagine if I have if, if, if I have a money on the other side, the money that giving to me, I will I will make it, I will doing it, proceed it, and I will doing it and then sell it to another part. What mm-hmm. do you think about your economics? What do you think about uh, it? Is that, is that correct or what? Uh, from one side, yes, you are correct. But from other side, uh, the head of this bank uh, is very advanced person, and this ba- bank is under go- uh, the government of, of government. the Russian, okay. yes, uh, of Federation. Okay. And uh, this person tried to involve all activity to be competitive on the market. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, he he opened such uh, services uh, in this bank as education. Oh, they have they as well. yes yes oh, yes of course. Okay okay. I tried to find the video about the bank. This is the funny video. This is for three minutes, uh, but I can't. This is the video about. Uh, about providing... Sberbank, yes, about the activity, because uh, it is very funny for people that bank can make many functions. Yeah. Additional, yes. What I'm, what I'm saying is, because I want to share to you about uh, ever we have experience in here, where in 1998, uh-huh. a, bank, a bank can have some of, we call it some of the rule. I don't say a bank, but a, a group of the bank, a group yes. of a, a conglomerate, right? Inside of this group, there is one a bank inside mm-hmm. it, right? with some others unit business. One of the unit business related with retail, even some others, for instance, like uh, real estate and others, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine you have the money, right? And then mm-hmm. you put the money in this bank, okay? When you put the money in this bank, of course, this bank will put the money that you put it in these banks to all of the unit business that they have, real estate, retail, and etc. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The problem is like this. In certain situations, the mortgage, you know the mortgage situation like in the United States, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. they have falling down where the house is price is very, very low. Even you buy some of the price, some of the house, let's say only one hundred dollars, for instance, in that time. And that's become a problem, right? For people, if they want to withdraw the money, right? That's become a uh-huh. problem. So I don't know. What's, is that the same? Is, I mean, is there any, any, any government, Russian government will think about that? Because this quite, quite, in my opinion, is quite uh, high risk. Uh-huh. Why I say high risk? Imagine, for instance, someone, if there is a problem, let's say, in real estate or retail, and the bank unable to, you know, to look at it, the investment that they put it, and suddenly they are not unable to pay, not to pay, actually to refund of the money if there's someone want to withdraw it, for instance, if the customer want to withdraw it. What's going on? So, what do you think about it? Because you're economist, right? So, what do you uh, think? They uh, they have competition. Uh, there are competition between Sberbank and Tinkov Bank. Oh, like competition. Yes, okay. yes. And uh, in Russia, we have uh, the biggest structure like Yandex. And Yandex okay. uh, make agreement with Tinkoff Bank and they make the same ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Yandex, you know. I know Yandex. It's yes, Yandex. The, yes, yeah. they have Yandex Taxi. Yes, 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 yes. Yandex the, Market. One of the unicorn, right? It's very big in Russia. Yes, Russia. yes. And the Sberbank follow for them. Mm-hmm. So they have a spare market, something like this. So the, the I don't the know. The competition yeah, between ecosystems only. The, okay, the ecosystems. So for instance, like when we discuss about ecosystem in Russia, the ecosystem in Russia is, is, is more open rather than I thought than in the first time because people thought that Russia is kind of closed country, right? All the mm-hmm. government over there. But if you look at carefully, is all of the capital in Russia is, almost the same like what happened in the United States, right? Almost mm-hmm. the same like that. So what I'm saying is, for instance, for instance, like technology comes, for instance, like Yandex. Yandex is almost 98% actually the backbone is in technology, right? Mm-hmm. Because they provided all of them is using the technology itself. But on the other side, uh, Yandex Group, if not mistaken, they have some of the, the what we call it, the, the support in the term of the bank behind it, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, so, yes. So is it okay like that in Russia? I think, yes. I think this is the like um, uh, financial industry group in Kaizen in Japan. Do you remember oh. their structure? Yes. They have bank and many, many, many industry and many, many, many services. Okay. but Yes, other, in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, in Japan they have the same like that. But mm-hmm. what, what I'm this saying is the is, same, the bank uh-huh. and other services around of the bank. Oh, okay. Something like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now I want to move into your because you are in labor, uh, your institution working in labor, right? <clears throat> so one of the problems, now I say I don't say problem, the challenging aspects for the labor is they 
easily to replace by the technology, if not mistaken, right? The labor. Mm -hmm. That's why one of the problem is, if you look at the profession that you mentioned in your presentation, mm -hmm. one of them is job that quite repetitive, that's easy to replace. Mm -hmm. uh, if not mistaken, you mentioned. One of them is actually labor, right? Mm -hmm. So my question is, if you discuss in the future, especially after the COVID, for instance, where there are industrial 4.0 in, in, in still on the place, I don't know, what is the future of the labor itself? Is it the same like what we have today? Or they will replace by the robot, they will replace by some of the artificial intelligence or even some other kind of tools? What do you think about it? I think that employee will seek new possibility to use their knowledge and they need to develop their soft skills because soft skill is the main uh, skills mm -hmm. now and uh, professional skills uh, uh, is uh, leaving behind now okay as researchers told tells us so you you said soft skill what kind of the skill that you mentioned uh, creativity uh, what else there are many so uh, skills that people need. Such as what? Because creativity. You, creativity. For example, uh, and some other th skills. And the progress will always create new jobs, more and more. Okay. Okay. But it okay. will be new. Mm, okay. Because, like what we have in Indonesia, actually, we are still in some of leveling that still. Uh, dependable with especially with the industry with manufacturing uh -huh. right? where labor labor is become the fundamental kind of issue in here especially like that uh -huh. so <clears throat> you said they will increase in the term of skill especially for the creativity right you said. Uh -huh. so what i'm saying is like this uh i don't know but uh, still this has become another question i want to ask to you if they increase this, the skill, do they have to go to the formal kind of education or informal education? Uh, it will be informal education. Uh, they need uh, development. This is some, some of skills uh, they will acquire after their experience, after their work on some project, for example. Such as what? Such as what kind of the informal that you mentioned? This is not professional uh, skills. Uh, these skills uh, can solve some uh, life problems of people. Okay. Life these problems. skills should be uh, changeable. Okay. Absolutely. And we, in, in Russia, we have some programs uh, that can help uh, to develop these skills. Uh, and uh, this program is supposed to be uh, supposed to collect uh, people in one place and they're working on one project. And then they will defend their project uh, in front of commission. And mm -hmm. so these programs can help to develop soft skills, uh, especially. Okay. How two people can be can communicate with each other? How can they uh, support each other? Uh, how can they work in team, teamwork? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something like this. Because uh, just wonder, is there any Im implication about the situation of the COVID nineteen with the uh, with the uh, with the current situation, especially for the wealth of the the the, the, the labor itself? Well, meaning the income that they have, it, especially for the labor. Is there any uh, impact in the company? Uh, on, on high uh, income, income level? Yeah, income level. Is there any, is there any implication? I mean, changes. <clears throat> uh, no, uh, because this research shows us that uh, the situation in the sector uh, of economy with high, uh, with, uh, high income uh, wasn't changed. Okay, so the labor itself, especially for the income, is still the same. According yes, to the, yes, still high the same. income, high income. Yes. Okay. So with but, a, in a, with a low income was changed. Low income. Uh, yes, I can share my screen again. Okay, sure, can sure, I? Sure, 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 of course. This is high level jobs, professional okay. occupation, and manager, yeah. directors, and senior officials. Yes, okay, this is yeah. high uh, high Level. paid uh, uh, jobs. This is uh, low level jobs, okay. and these uh, jobs can be automat automatized. Automat 
Automatize. Automatize. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. One, yes. Right? yes. <clears throat> and the situation during COVID with this type of job uh, did not change. With this, yes, this uh, uh, it is very. It is mm -hmm. very difficult, yes, because uh, uh, some uh, some enterprises lost their orders uh, and they don't need a lot of production mm -hmm. in some enterprises. And uh, the other risk jobs in the middle of this here, mm -hmm. middle jobs, like uh, middle, middle income jobs, like accountant, mm -hmm. like a loan manager, and some yeah. other things. Lawyer and yes, yes, yes. So you say that uh, the leveling of uh, people, especially the blue one, it's the blue one on the top, right? Yes, um, yes. The the blue one on the, mm -hmm. the top. That's 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 the, the top. Of, yes, yes. That's one of the job that probably will be easy mm -hmm. to, to to replace to replace the mm -hmm. the yellow one on the down. That's quite that's the job that's quite difficult to replace uh, it's not so difficult it depends on the level of country look here okay here. it depends on level of country for example uh, us yes they yes. don't have uh, any production of they course. have production but the most but... of the production activity uh, was replaced in other country such yes. as china indonesia of course yes okay or yes. In Mexico, yes, in Mexico, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So look here, mm -hmm. uh, the, it depends on country. Uh, if we uh, compare a country with high income, we can see that in 2000, uh, middle, uh, lo, tak, tak, mm -hmm. mid medium skills was uh, in the United States, for example, was 50% 50, 50 of employee. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2020, it was forty-six uh, percent, and uh, you can compare uh, high skills and low skills, okay. and you can compare here. Mm -hmm. Look here, high income. Uh, they don't have any changes with the low skills. Yes, mm -hmm. if we can compare uh, different uh, ages. Uh, we, in the low income countries and we can see the low skills the number mm -hmm. of employees with uh, low skills will decrease will decrease mm -hmm. okay yes okay. yes okay because uh, these uh, places uh, the these uh, working places will be automa oh. uh, automatic okay 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 Different country has different decision and a different uh, way for their development. Okay. Is there any is there any characteristic based on developing countries or developed countries? Uh, yes, their income. Based on the income. Yes, and GDP. Uh, GDP yeah. Oh, GDP. Per, yeah, per capita. Okay. Okay. What an example, for instance, like sorry, for instance, like Indonesia, for instance. What do you think about that Indonesia? If you look at the, the the chart, because there's a blue and the yellow one, right? Indonesia, what do you think? I like Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, I mean you you like Indonesia. What, <laughs> I'm saying, what I'm saying is in the based on your discussion before, if you look at it about the, the the leveling of the job and everything. Uh, you you, know? you mean this? It yes. depends on Oh, sorry, yeah. I, I will share because my screen you, again. Yeah, okay. You said in because of GDP, uh, it right? depends on what kind of uh, job uh, okay, this way, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Uh, it was. Uh, it, it depends on automatic of job okay. in your country. What do you think about automatization of your job? In the for example, in the industry, for example, in agriculture or in uh, car production, you have uh, uh, production. You have Toyota, yes. Uh, the Toyota actually is uh, is from the Japan, but they yes, it's from the, the it's from Japan. But yeah, you told the, me the last time that you have your own production in Toyota. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. we, we export it anyway to another country. Mm -hmm. Toyota. So we make manufacturing in here using the brand Toyota or Mazda or whatever. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. we export it to another country, for instance, like that. So it is quite common in here, like that. Even mm -hmm. the uh, the bike. It's the same like that, motorbike. Uh huh. And what do you think about automatization of the job? <clears throat> automatization is quite common in here, especially for the manufacturing. Where that's like why in I, Japan. 
Yes, that's why we have some uh -huh. assembly like a robots. They can put it uh, all of the the, the devices that they assembly, it, and after that they can uh -huh. even they can they can calculate precisely how long this will be done for the one production one unit production. Okay, if we compare uh, not car industry, we compare this with agriculture or food production. Okay. What can you say? Ag what kind of level of automatization of these processes? Agriculture, in my personal opinion, is quite typical in the term of automatization. Yeah? If you look at it, like, for instance, like United States, yeah? mm -hmm. the United States is almost uh, using quite quite uh, more than, I guess, 80% of those products in automation. But in here still, it's quite less than 40%, probably, mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. 20%. So automation is quite far because the number of laborers in here, based on the traditional culture, I guess, mm -hmm. we are the agriculture countries. So we're still using the human as the backbone, not using the machine, for instance, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what do you think? Uh, what kind of skills uh, will be there? Will will be in your country? What 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 kind of skills? preferable? Yes, yes, yes. After COVID nineteen, what the kind of the skill in, in in here, especially in Indonesia, the skills. Yes, low skills and skilled agricultural, forestry, and fishery workers. Look here, this yes. Low skills and skilled agriculture. Yes, forestry. yes, yes. Yes, of course. This is becoming mm -hmm. one of the. And but, it will will decrease in yeah, future. But, but one again, one again is quite unique in here, especially the COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh -huh. When we discuss about the agricultures and the forestry and fishery workers, I'm not sure. I don't see any kind of uh, problem, especially for this one, in the COVID nineteen uh -huh. pandemic. Uh -huh. Why? Because in the term of production, they are still working well. We don't. We never heard about the problem, especially for. The, uh, the problem is best for the agriculture or forestry or even fishery now. Yes, this forest. is a specific job. Yeah, but mm -hmm. but the other side, the people that consume it, using it, this have a problem. Most of the COVID-19 actually, that happens especially in the, in the city, in the main mm -hmm. city, for instance. So that's why it happens like that, especially in Indonesia now. That's why I said uh, in the future, probably this has become quite challenging, this Many people will rethink about, again about <clears throat> the workforce that they will have to look at about this one in the future. So, uh, Professor Natalia, one of the things, this is probably the epilogue of our discussion uh, today, is about uh, what do you think about the initiative from the government they have to give? In? Because there are some of initiatives from the government that quite vary, right? For instance, like in Indonesia, we have initiative from the government uh, specific called kind of the uh, giving the cash to the people. Uh, yes, we giving have the, the same. Money, giving uh -huh. the money to the people. And the other side, that is we call a tax, the tax exemption. Okay. On the other uh -huh. side, government provides some of the support, especially for the industry, oh, no, no, uh -huh. time of industry, for instance. They're giving uh -huh. kind of the, the money. Uh, two days ago, we have a webinar with friends from Japan. The government, the government of Japan provided what they call kind of the support for the restaurants because in Japan, one of the industry that hit very, very severe, especially for the restaurant, hospitality industry. Why? Because people cannot go to the restaurant, right? Because they have to, to take away, take, take uh -huh. the food and it is somewhere. So restaurant is decreased decreases very rapidly, about 70 to 80 percent of the, uh -huh. uh, the uh, what we call the, uh, the income inside. So the government provide giving the money is about $500 per day, $500 per day. That's why, according to the uh, professor from Japan, there are some of people that open the restaurant suddenly in the COVID-19 uh -huh, because uh -huh. they will get the money, $500 per day. <laughs> it is quite unique. I'm not sure about that in Russia. So what do you think? kind of the model of the support from the government to the citizens in the COVID-19 pandemic? I think we have <laughs> the same uh, aids from government, like yeah. another country. But there is some uh, 
some specific, uh, may, maybe different some, maybe different purposes. But we have money from the government. For example, our government decided to give money people who has children and th these children will go to school on September. So oh. I can I can make my application and send my application to the government and take this money. And I will use site. Uh, we have gosuslugi.ru and uh, by using this site, I can make my application very easy. In the last year, we our government gave money, uh, family with children too. Uh, moreover, government um, uh, helped our individual entrepreneurs with their activity uh, and small businesses. Uh, they reduced their tax. Uh, they uh, uh, and sometimes and two times they abandoned tax. Abandoned for this tax. yes 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 okay and uh, they gave uh, some financial support for mm -hmm. different type of activities so government i think the same tools but different some and sometimes different conditions okay 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 thank you so much professor natalia to our discussion this uh today is very very deep we discuss about the situation especially for the discussion about digital stuff technology and the situation of COVID-19 pandemic and we discuss also some of the initiatives that uh, will be <coughs> given from the government to the society. Thank you so much for your time and of course thank you so much for your presentation and of course we will discuss it. Uh, we do hope yeah, the COVID-19 pandemic will be yeah will be end up very soon. <laughs> Yeah, so I hope can, so because so we, can... we will have grant. I, I think yes, so. And yes, you need to can. go to Russia. <laughs> you <laughs> don't have any chance. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We already more than one year, right? We have to isolate it. We cannot go somewhere. We have one to and stay half. One and a half year. That's why. That's that's very very bad situation anyway. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's our podcast today. That uh, presented by the Doctor of Computer Science Program from Munich University. Today, we have a very interesting discussion with Professor Natalia Filminova. And of course, if you uh, like and share and subscribe our YouTube, so please do so. Thank you so much again to Professor Natalia and see you again in certain uh, kind of level, probably in Russia, probably, or somewhere else. Yes, Thank you yes. so much. <laughs>